Hey, Dosers, Chris here. Thanks for joining us once again on these Daily Devos. Hey, if you just tuned into our last one, you heard Taylor do an amazing job of just bringing us to sort of that halfway point in the book of First Peter. In fact, in First Peter 3, verse 8, he starts with this word, finally. And that's what a pastor says when he wants you to think he's winding down, but actually there's still a couple chapters left to go. But, but Peter is bringing in this home stretch of finally. Let me tell you, because of Jesus and who he is, how this is gonna impact your life in such amazing ways. And as Taylor talked about, there was this encouragement for us to be obedient, to get along, how we live life with one another, because it's gonna go better for us and better for our relationship with God. But if you've been following with us on the weekends as we do the life and teachings of Jesus here at North Coast and realizing once again, Peter is speaking this to a bunch of Christians under trial and persecution, the reality once again comes that sometimes it doesn't go well for you if you're doing good. Sometimes obedience doesn't lead to happily ever after. We're watching the life of Jesus on the weekends and realizing there's a lot of opposition coming up against him. A lot of people don't want a Jesus to be Lord of their life. Everyone wants a savior. Everyone wants a superhero. But man, this Jesus is really starting to push buttons with how we have to give everything and how we live. And we come to just two verses today on this final stretch of 1 Peter. Two verses in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. That's all we're doing. That says, what about if it doesn't go well with you? Come on, two small verses. You got time for this. Let's read. It says this. So who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? Well, once again, living a Christian life, I mean, how bad is it gonna be? Do you really think there's a ton of persecution in America today over that? I mean, who's really gonna hurt someone who's being as loving as they can to people? However, <laughs> but even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. As we cut running down this home stretch of how we live this Christian life, it likes, look, this is gonna go well with you and well with your walk with God. I mean, who's really gonna come against you if your sole desire is to go, I'm gonna love people as Jesus has loved me? How many enemies are you really gonna make? However, there will be times where you go, man, this comes at a cost. We've seen that in the life of Christ on the weekend. We understand Peter is writing to a church that's being persecuted by the culture they live in. And I get that for some of us. He goes, so in that, if you do suffer for what is right, understand that you're blessed. Don't fear what the other people fear. Understand who's in your corner and who's on your side. In other words, the point of obedience in our life is not in being blessed. The point of obedience is not in things going better for us. The point of obedience is to be obedient. The point of obedience, it shows a heart, a desire, a mindset that says, God, you are my Lord. See, there's a big difference between believing in God and having a Lord. Let me say that again. There is a big difference between believing in God and having a Lord. It's fine to believe in God, that there's someone, something out there, but having a Lord? Now remember, let's go back to early years. Uh, let's go back to early Europe. Let's go back to even the day and age this is being written in. You have people that are owned by a state or an empire. There is a sovereignty, a sovereign government or leader, Lord, King over you. You are a vassal of that man's land and his power. And every aspect of your life is lived under someone's lordship that you never go against, you never question, you don't doubt, you don't choose to do your own if the Lord said this. And this is where I think as Peter turns the corner and we start taking a deeper dive into, so what's this look like in life? Because of Jesus's grace, love, and mercy, what he did to show his love for me, the cost he paid to redeem me, not just forgive me, but to buy me back, to cleanse me so his life can be in me, as a result of that, he goes, I don't want you to believe in God, I want you to understand you have a Lord and your daily obedience shows whether things go good or bad for it, you're gonna be blessed of a God that says, that's my daughter, that's my son. That's someone that by the way they walk, by the way they talk, by how they do business, by how they treat others, especially those that don't like you, wanna hurt you or enemies, that's someone that's under my Lordship, not a believer in God, who doesn't? That's someone who has a Lord. Two verses, strong verses from Peter. Live life as if you truly not believe in God, but have a Lord of your life, whether things go good or bad, and understand he's watching, and you will be blessed. There's your daily dose.